Hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to the Pearl of Wisdom Show, part of BPLPicks.com, where we're going to be looking at the New York Rangers and their season total over under from FanDuel. Uh, they're sitting at 98.5 as a line. We'll take a look at that. And we're going to take a look at a whole bunch of analytics. This is for the diehard hockey fans. If you really want to get onto the underbelly of the NHL and each team, you're going to be probably pretty interested in this. I use JFresh Analytics for the sake of this video. I use other analytics for my business, which is a professional sports handicapper. I'm one of the top point, probably 5% NHL handicappers in possibly the world, definitely North America, and you can be all part of that for free right now. I'll send you a link in the comment section and uh, the description, and you can go in for free, check it out for a month, something like that. I'll let you sit there just to see how good it is to make crap loads of money with sports. It's fun. And I know there's a lot of people out there that promise you a lot, but there's nobody out there that's going to give you a month for free. Anyways, we're going to look at the New York Rangers. We're going to look at e almost each player. So this is going to take a bit, 20 to 30 minutes of in awesome analytics and thoughts on why the Rangers are going to be over or under 98.5. All right, so let's look at first FanDuel. FanDuel, it's the best. There, I said it. I like it. Oh, it's not the best. It's good. It's really good. Over 98.5 points, minus 113, basically like a pick -em. They're going, and, and this is the interesting thing, and I find this fascinating. Last year, they had 107 points. And they are saying that uh, it, it's on a pick 'em, 98.5. So why the drop? Well, let's take a look, shall we? First of all, we're going to look at the Rangers. This is their lineup. They brought in Blake Wheeler. Uh, besides that, they really didn't make all that much of a change. Jonathan Quick is a backup, which I'm not going to look at the analytics, but I'm going to say right now they better find somebody else because I think they're going to have to find somebody else because he has been horrible for two years in L.A. I don't understand that move at all. Without even looking at the analytics, I'm just going to say that to begin with. So let's look at their top line. They brought in Wheeler. They didn't really lose all that much out of their lineup. And they figure they're going to drop. One of the reasons is, is the East got a lot stronger. A lot of teams got a lot stronger from last year. Ottawa, Detroit, Carolina, New Jersey. It's just getting better. I mean, that would be one of the reasons. And that's going to make it difficult for my pick, whether they're going to get over 98.5 points this season. We're going to start out with Sabanajad. Sabanajad, if th this is an incredibly weird player, to tell you the honest truth. He doesn't drive offense. He's he's not bad defensively. Like he's just below average for a high scoring player. If you can sit at 45% even even strength defense, you're not doing too bad. But the funny thing about Sabanajad is his Analytics are driven by his point production outside of driving the offense. So this is a player that finds a way to get points, but doesn't drive the offense at all. And if you notice, most people think of Mika Zibanejad as a goals guy. But his goals per 60 in in 5-on-5 five five is, is not is okay, but not what you would expect from a previous 40-goal score. His assist for 60 is fantastic. He's actually more of a playmaker than he is a goal guy. Um, so his projected war, which is wins above replacement, meaning 
how many players could you put there to have more wins than if Mika Zibanejad is there is really good. However, his even strength offense and defense is not that great at all. Weird player. You don't see this too often. I'm going to see how it play, play how I, it's going to be interesting to see how his analytics play out in the future. Um, now we're going to go to, okay, we got Chris Kreider. I'll just tell you right now, I don't need to go to his analytics. Well, no, I will because he is so underrated. I, I have people say, people have been calling for this guy to be traded for a heck of a long time. And he's a beast. Just plain and simple. One of the best defensive wingers in the game. Yet he's well worth the $6.5 million. Not a problem at all. In fact, he's one of the reasons why I think the Rangers are going to be um, okay. Or very like He's one of the reasons why I think the Rangers have hope to win a cup. Let's put it that way. And a guy who I do not have the same sentiment for is our Timmy Panarin. This is probably one of the most overplayed players in the league. And most people that are Rangers fans know this. At one time, he was very good. But if you notice his trajectory, he had a 74% even strength offense. Uh, this is line driving, by the way. It's not about point production. It's about line driving the offense. And 74% for $11.6 million player is not good. Not good at all. He's a great playmaker. He always has been. His uh, defensive game improved last year and it uh, up to about 25%, which isn't bad, but it, the year before it was just diabolically bad. So we'll see where it goes. I just don't think this is a guy you want to be paying $11.6 million for if you want to win a cup. Plain and simple. He's not a bad player, don't get me wrong. But he's not a superstar. And he is eating up a shitload of your cap and not driving even strength defense. I, for me, no player that does, does – there are a few players that do not drive even strength defense that I would pay this kind of money for. There are a couple, but our Timmy Panarin is not one of them. And I think he's weighing this team down. Tell me in the comment section, Rangers fans, if you agree with me. But I think he's weighing this team down a lot. So here's another one that gets has been getting a lot of black is Kako. He's only 22 years old, my friends. Um, his analytics are okay. He, he For a guy who's 22 years old, and he's been, I know he was a high draft pick and all of that, but he has the skills to get better. Um, as a third liner playing on a second line, he's not a bad player at all, and I imagine he's going to get better here. His even strength defense is what I love more than anything for a 22 year old to be that good at even at even with even strength defense is a guy i'm holding on to i'm holding on to that dude these are the these are gems in the league today tampa bay vegas and colorado won cups the last what six years seven years None of them, they all had 95% of their lineup was a plus even strength defense analytically. I'm talking about forwards, that is. 95%. Colorado, there wasn't one player under, not one, when they won the cup. In fact, their worst defenseman, Defensive forward was Kadri, which is what everybody said he was the best two-way guy, blah, 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 blah. He wasn't. He was their worst. And he was still at around 50%. So I love these guys. You, you keep them all day. You do not let a guy like Kako go. Um, so we'll look at – so we looked at Panarin. Um, Vincent Trocek, I'm not going to go into his analytics for the sake of time, but he's not bad. He's an average second-liner 
I don't mind it. Actually, when they signed the contract, I kind of poo-pooed on it a bit. But ever since he's come into New York, he has matured into a very good two-way player. And um, I have to swallow my pride and say that I was wrong. He's worth the 5.6. Not a bad second liner at all. But what we will look at for sure is Wheeler, who they got for virtually nothing. And everybody was like freaking out. Oh my gosh, we're getting Blake Wheeler for nothing. But guess what? He's not worth anything. He's shit. He's honestly a shit player now. Even at $1.1 million a year, he is not that great. He's going to have to play on the third line. That'll give him weaker competition. I imagine he'll bring his analytics up a little bit. But personally, after watching him in Winnipeg the last couple years, I think it's very possible he gets beat out of this lineup halfway through the year. I wouldn't doubt it at all. He is just, he just sits around the perimeter and passes, which he is a, he's an extremely good passer. He's still a great playmaker. You can play him on the power play on the, on the wing or what have you. But overall, I don't want this guy in my lineup. It, I, I don't think it's because he physically can't do it. I just don't think he gives a shit anymore. I seriously don't. Now, maybe there's something to, about going to New York that's going to elevate his game and all that kind of stuff like that. But personally, I think he just went to New York because he gets to have more party time and have fun and stuff like that. Like, I could be wrong. You can comment in the comment section and thrash me all you want. But his projected war at 8% as a second liner means that 92% of the second liners in the league would be better than Blake Wheeler. And it's not going to go up that much in the third, on the third line, because look at his even strength defense. It's basically non-existent. This is a team in the Rangers that need to be better five on five. Blake Wheeler doesn't help you at all. I'm sorry. I don't give a shit if it's only 1.1 million. I don't want him on my team. I don't want him on my team. Uh, we'll go Lafreniere, Heedle, and Goudreau. And there's, I'm going to do all of these because there's something very interesting about all of them. First of all, I'm going to look at Goudreau. Everybody's like, Goudreau, we need a guy like Goudreau on our team. We need a guy like Goudreau. We need a guy like Goudreau. Barkley Goudreau, he's big. He can play defense. He can't play defense for shit. I'm sorry. He's terrible. Ever since he's become a Ranger, he's been terrible. He was better in Tampa Bay where they had a system that was amazing. Now, I'm going to give him something because they have a new coach now. And it's a damn good coach compared to the coach that they had before. And he may improve quite a bit, but I just don't see that much of an improvement. I'm sorry. I just, I can't. As a as a fourth liner, his projected war is 10%. That basically means he shouldn't even be in this league. Not at all. And if you watch him play, he is nothing like he was in Tampa Bay. In Tampa Bay, they basically told him, don't worry about scoring. Just be a bit player. Go into the corners. We, are, we want you to play the best defensive game you can possibly get play. And... Uh, Laviolette, I've, I forgot about the coach. Laviolette might be able to help him out a lot. Laviolette is a fantastic coach. In fact, he might be able to help all of these guys out a lot. When they grab Gallant, if you remember, and if you don't, I'm telling you now, I thought it was a terrible move. I don't think he's a good coach. I think Laviolette is, and he can improve all of these guys defense, defensively, especially five on five. But at 3.6 million, for four years, disastrous overpayment. He shouldn't be making more than Wheeler's making this year. Not even close. He should be making league minimum. League minimum is what Goudreau should be making. And this is your, you know, they're, they're, look at, if you notice here, they're playing him as a third liner. A third liner. Who's going to take his spot? Nobody, really. Like maybe Cooley or something like that will come up. Othman's going to need some time. 
And when people are wondering, well, why can't the Rangers do anything? Because you have not enough forwards that can play defense at all. Uh, but we're going to look at Heedle. Heedle, who I thought was going to be a lot better by now. I championed him quite a bit for a while, but he's okay. He's even strength. He, again, he's one of those guys that can, you know, he plays not bad defense. He, he's not a bad player. He's not bad. I thought he would be better than this. He's only 24 years old. But he, he, he drives offense not too bad. I think he should be playing on the second line, to tell you the honest truth, somewhere. And I prefer him as a winger than a center. But they have nobody else to play center, so... He ends up having to go there. When when he was playing as a winger, if you look here, this was in 2020-21. Look at his even strength defense. It was way up to 75%. To me, he's way better on the wing. Way better. Um, but that being said, they it, it, center position is tough to adjust to. And it's possible he can get better. Up. But at, right now, uh, he, he's an he's average third line center. So what you're seeing here is there's not much depth. And I know everybody, everybody is going to want to know what Lafreniere's analytics are. And they're not great. They're really not great. That's for sure. <laughs> it's not very good. Um, great goal scorer. He's got finishing ability. He knows how to get in the spots and score. He's not going to drive a line right now. But he's only 21 years old. Um, the, the Lafreniere was a kind of, I don't like to use the word victim, but I think you kind of have to in this place because he came out of the Quebec league that is just not developing players for NHL, for the NHL. Do you know that the last, in the last draft, only eight players were selected out of the QMHL. It's a soft league. It doesn't teach defense where shit you find a guy in the QMHL that has all the tools and size, and then you go, you you hope that down the road they're able to adjust. And that's what the Rangers did, because you can't send them back to the queue. There's nothing to learn there. So you end up having to play them in your lineup. You can't put them in the AHL. And it's it's a shitty development league. It's, it's a shitty um, way to develop a player, but you have no choice. It, the best way to develop Lafreniere is exactly what the Rangers did based in the situation that they had, or the, is what they had to work with. He should have gone to the AHL, or he would have been better off to go with the WHL or the OHL after his first year. And now you got this. So it's taking him longer to develop, and he probably won't reach the heights he could have if it wasn't for that. But anyways... He uh, his even strength defense is not great. I mean, he, he the projected war I think is based on the fact that the kid's got so much talent that he's got to break out sooner or later. And he's only 21, and he probably will. I think he's going to be fine. I said I've been saying that for two, three years, and I'm going to stick with it. I think he's going to be a good player. Um, is he going to be a superstar? No, no. And when he was drafted, I I, I said that. Don't expect a superstar here because of the way he's going to have to be developed, and that's exactly what has happened. It's unfortunate for him. He could have been doing a lot better in his career if he wasn't, didn't come out of the queue. Um, ah, we'll go with Jim, Jimmy Vesey. He's a good defensive guy. Nick Benino and Tyler Pit Pitlick is not. It's not a bad fourth line. But their weakness here, without a doubt, is their depth and the fact that their top forwards, for the most part, besides a Kreider and eventually probably Kako, are not good defensively. They're not, and when, when I say defensively, I'm not saying what they do in the D zone. I'm talking about a mindset all over the ice and how to play to only take risk when it's not going to hurt you. And all of those, there's a million things. You watch Bergeron play. He could have way more points than he did. But he overall as a player is the poster boy for how the league, how you're supposed to play today. He was well above his, he was well ahead of his time. And now the time is now. And I don't think this team forward-wise is built to be good enough to win a cup. 
Um, so then we go the opposite direction. On defense, this team is a beast, and that's what's going to hold them hold them together. Their their defensemen. I'll go over them really quick. From pretty much every single one. Ryan Lindgren, everybody knows, great defensive defenseman. Fantastic. They have him as a third pair here, third pair of minutes. I don't know why. He's He actually had kind of had a little bit of a down year defensively last year, but as a defensive defenseman, you know, for a second pair guy, you're not going to find too much better than him. I hear a lot of people shitting on Miller. Okay, Andre Miller. Stop it. Uh, 23 years old, and he's got an 80% even strike defense. He could be a little better offensively. He's got a big shot. He's going to contribute, and he is a, he's a great player for 23 years old. Nothing wrong with him at all. His even strength offense dropped off, uh, or dropped off a little bit, but I think he, his offense is going to break out. He just has way too many tools to me. To, to not have it break out a little bit. I think he's a 40-point guy, plays incredibly solid defense, excellent defenseman, no doubt about it. I mean, do I even need to tell you about Fox? We'll look at it, but the guy's insane. Look at that. Yeah, he's just a beast for days. Beast, beast, beast. You don't even need analytics. You can just watch it. Uh, you can just watch it on the ice. I test everything. He is a beast. So let's go look at Truba. And I've been very critical of Truba throughout his career. Um, and a lot of people think, oh, well, what we need guys like Truba. He's a defensive defenseman. No, he's not. <laughs> That's what I've been saying for a long time. He's not. He's not good at defense. He overhits. And you know what? I think he will get better as now that Granado is gone, though. I really do. Um, Granado just likes these guys to go out and hurt people. He, he doesn't understand, to me, the game the way it needs to be understood in this day and age. Um, he's, he's, he's great offensively, and people don't talk about that when it comes to Truba. But he's got a blistering shot. He's a good playmaker. He's got all the tools to be one of the better defensemen in the league. He's just got to stop running around all over the freaking ice. Like, and, and pinching when he shouldn't be pinching and all that kind of crap. Just simplify his game. And Truba could be worth the $8 million. Right now he's not. Right now he's not. But simplify his game. And I think there's a pretty good chance that Truba could be worth a lot more. And the Rangers, if Truba could do that, would be probably the maybe the best defensive team in the league or getting well not quite but it's getting there um gustafson who used to be an analytics disaster has come a long way and i really like this move as you can see he he had a big year last year and i believe that was in toronto and washington probably the best year he's ever had um he, he actually was an average second pair guy. Before that, you know, he was a power play specialist, but he, he really put it together last year on both sides of the ice. And uh, I think this was a really good move at 0.8 for 1 million. Excellent. And I would never have said that about Gustafsson before. Finally, we'll look at Schneider. And... Yeah, he's still got lots of work to do there. You know, he's he's just a young guy. He's 22 years old. He's got all the tools, but he hasn't put it all together yet. Um, again, he had a dip defensively last year. Just about everybody did under Granado. Just about everybody regressed defensively in the whole lineup. And I don't need to talk about Shosturkin. If he's not the he's top three in the league goaltender, so fortunately they have that. So, 98.5. Do I think the Rangers are going to be over under 98.5? I think they still have a very strong regular season team. Um, 
I still don't think that they're a team that's going to be able to win a cup yet. They have a lot of work to do um, as far as forwards and their defensive play. Um, possibly this year that'll change with the new coach. We'll see. To me, the Rangers are like the, the, the player you see that has all the skill, all the size, but, you know, they call it all the tools but no toolbox. I, I don't think that all the tools are in the toolbox yet. If they ever all get in, this team has a chance to win a cup. But as it stands right now, I don't think so. However, I do believe they will. They could. They should be somewhere around 100 to 102 points this year. I think they could regress because of how much the East has, has improved. But. When you got Shesterkin and you got a lot of guys that can score and you got a great top four, as long as injuries don't come in, I'm still going to take them over 98.5. That's my full 42. Thanks for listening, everybody. Have a great day. Okay.